What's up guys, my name is Luke and welcome back to Motion and Design. So today I thought I'd just do a random video, I don't really have any plans so I kind of just thought I'd do a random tutorial. So I saw this video by Nick, um, before I get his name wrong, Nick Meduka, if I'm saying your name wrong dude, I'm, I'm really sorry. But yeah, he did this like Houdini tutorial of this like, kind of Vellum cloth sim. Uh, and I remember like doing this tutorial a while back and I was like, well, this is really cool. And now with the Cinema 4D 2023, the latest cloth engine, just with how advanced it is, we can get a similar result. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. I think someone already did a similar tutorial uh, in Blender. Uh, so yeah, I didn't see anyone do something like this for Cinema 4D. So I thought I would do it seeing as though I saw it and I wanted to figure out how to do it in cinema and so yeah I thought I'd do a tutorial on how to do it so yeah let's get straight into it cool so let's start off by just creating a cylinder over here let's just make it a little bit smaller something like this so the only reason I'm doing a cylinder is just because it's kind of similar to the other tutorials and it's just a similar workaround uh, so yeah let's go over here press ND so we can see the lines over here and let's start off with something like 50 and 150 uh, if I can type there we go uh, we'll make it more dense later on in life we just for now we want to do it this way so that we can actually see what we're doing in real time then let's go over here and add in a vertex map let's add a null as well you'll see why in a second and then in the vertex map let's add in a spherical field let's make that a little bit smaller maybe like 10 and let's bring the spherical field out to about there. That should be good. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Maybe like... Yeah, like that works. Let's just bring it down a bit. Cool, and then let's throw this in the null. And then over here with the null, we're just gonna animate this. So let's go over here. And then over here, let's hit it to 360. Let's just make these linear and now it should go all the way around awesome that's what we want cool so this won't work properly if we had to throw on a cloth tag now it would only turn into cloth where this is turning around and that's not what we want uh, yellow so that we're telling the program this is where we want to affect it and with that that's quite easy we can go over here add in a freeze with a spherical field, make sure the blending mode is at, um, changed to max, so it adds on top of the freeze over here. And then with the freeze, let's just click on this auto update. Now if we press play, it will go around like that, which is exactly what we want. Awesome. So let's go over here into simulations, add in the cloth, go over here into the mix animation, and then drag in our vertex map over here. So now we're telling it that only turn into cloth where this vertex map is being affected. So now if we had to press play, it turned into cloth over there. But that's not at all the effect that we want. So let's go and make some changes over here. So we're gonna mainly be messing with bendingness and the stretchiness and in the toggling. So let's first off over here, change this to about 300 press play Ooh. and that's happening because we only want to change that where the vertex map is being affected so let's press play again and now it's kind of uh, each polygon is turning into 300% of its previous size so that's pretty much what's happening there and now over here in the bendingness let's set this to like I don't know something big uh, and just like that and let's see what that looks like nice and see that's pretty much the effect that we want over here and I mean that already looks pretty cool let's add in some more time over here just so we can let it kind of bounce around for a little bit once it's done nice cool but we want it to be way more than that so let's actually make this bigger over here and even bigger over there and let's see what this looks like now that is much better that's giving us that like drooping effect that i was looking for so yeah of course uh depending on the look that you're going for you would change this so if you kind of want that um the previous look that we had this would make sense too also what you can do is you could turn on the balloon and that gives us a 
little bit of a different amount. So with the ballooning, what I noticed was that it kind of goes inwards. And the way that I figured out to stop that from happening is if we go over here into simulations, add in an attractor, and then set this to minus 10. Now it does the exact same thing, maybe minus 20. Why is it not being affected? Let's see if that fixes it. Hmm. So I guess that kind of solves it, but I mean, that's just causing us some problems. So let's go over here, Command D. Let's set up the smoothing iterations, maybe to around like three. Maybe that'll help solve our problems over here. Kind of, but not really. Um, I understand what is happening. Our tractor, the force is over here, so that's why it's kind of doing that. Let's bring our force and put it over there. And now we can change this back to negative 20, I think, negative 2, just a little bit much. And if we press play now, yeah, now it's pushing it out and it's not going inwards. So depending on the look that you want, uh, for my original render, I didn't do the ballooning, but I'm just kind of showing you guys that that is an option and kind of how I problem solved the fact that it would kind of go inwards. So yeah, let's just turn that off for now. And let's go back to the original result that we had. I like that, I think it looks pretty cool. It kind of looks like a molting effect, which could be also pretty cool. Uh, that actually might be an interesting thing for tutorial. I saw, I think it was also, Nick, or maybe it was someone else who did a, uh, this video on a TV that was molting. I don't know if there was like an actual tutorial on it, but there was like a breakdown and that kind of molted. Although that's using, that's definitely not using cloth, but I feel like we could get a similar effect by using cloth. Um, but yeah, I'd have to test that out. And let's add over here a floor plane. Let's put it like here. And over here, let's add in a collider. So now as that goes around, it should hit the floor, and yeah, nice. Nice. Maybe if we keep this on, it will make it spread apart a little bit more. It does kind of, but not really. Cool, so we want to get a little bit more detail in here because you'll see that now that we've uh, made it stretch so much, it's taking every single polygon over here, already making it 300 times <laughs> the size and then just completely stretching it. So uh, we definitely want to add in some more segments over here. So I think if we just had to double these, so let's take this to 100 and then set this to 300. And now you'll notice that if we have to go back into the vertex map, it gets all messed up. Um, and that is a really easy solve. Just delete the freeze over here, add in another one and click on this auto update and then it'll be back to normal. Uh, what's happening there is that the vertex map is set to the polygons over here, but then when we change the amount of polygons, it moves up even though the vertex map was affecting those, it's because of the freeze. So yeah, that's a just quick fix around that. And so now if we had to press play, oh, don't crash. Yeah, this new cloth engine is wild. Like, I barely ever had it crash. It's honestly crazy. It's so cool. Um, so yeah, that's kind of exactly the effect that we've been looking for. I think it's just pretty much like the, the render that I had in the beginning. Uh, so, yeah, if we had to cache this out, and I will see you in a few seconds. Cool, and that just finished caching, and now if we press play, you should get a nice real-time playback of that. And look at that, super sick. Cool, so now we just need to add this into a subdivision surface, and look at all those beautiful little details over there. So obviously if you want more details, 
add in more segments over here. You can make it way more uh, advanced and a little bit more in depth over here, but I'm not going to do that for this tutorial. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to do that. I just didn't want to wait for really long cache times. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, it was kind of quick and random, but I hope you learned something from it. Um, I had fun figuring out this effect, and yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. Now, if you're interested, the project file that I created with like the textures and the lighting is on my Patreon. Also, with a bunch of other stuff, I kind of up or I try to upload every Wednesday. So every month, there's about four new project files up on Patreon, and there's also a bunch of my personal projects that I upload all the project files for you guys. So yeah, if you want to support me, uh, you can support me on Patreon, or you can just watch the video. Although a like and a subscribe goes a long way if you guys want to do that. But if not, that is chilled. And I hope you have a great day. I'll see you guys soon. Cheers.